Good morning, guys. We are up to chapter five of Bystander. Chapter five is called School. Belport Central Middle School included grades six to eight with students streaming in from four different elementary schools. It was organized into houses, like at Hogwarts, Eric noted, but without the exploding jelly beans or cool wizard tricks. And somehow that was supposed to make the experience more manageable. Unfortunately, as they say, Timing is everything, and it was plain bad luck that Eric arrived a year too late, after the newness of sixth had hardened into established groups. By seventh grade, everybody knew one another. Routines had been set, cliques formed. But Eric was ready for that. He'd be all right. It was just going to take some time, that's all. Eric rode his bike to school that first day, while his younger brother watched TV at home, still in his pajamas. The elementary school didn't start until an hour later. Eric pulled up to the bike rack a few minutes early as a long row of buses disgorged a torrent of students. They poured into the main lobby like a babbling river to resounding shouts and waves and chatter. When he climbed the front steps and entered the building, Eric was immersed in a rolling sea of faces. The noise, the tumult, the clatter, Eric brushed up against soap scrubbed girls wearing strawberry lip balm, pushed past boys whose armpits were slathered with sickly smelling antiperspirant. It was the first minute of the first day of school, a time of hope and electricity. Sure, everyone would soon be complaining about dull teachers and too much homework, but for these first few seconds, it was all promise and possibility. The kids in Belport didn't seem much different from the ones Eric knew back in Ohio. Maybe they appeared better dressed, a little trendier. They had more money, snazzy cell phones, probably their own laptops. The girls wore more makeup, had complicated haircuts, walked with more swish and swagger. Eric wasn't sure if that was a difference between Long Island and Ohio or just a part of growing up. By the looks of things, some of these girls had grown plenty. A few of them seemed years older than Eric and pretty intimidating. Eric's big fear on the first day was getting lost, and BCMS was the perfect school for it, a vast, sprawling maze of hallways. Over the summer, Eric had received a packet of information designed for incoming students that included his schedule, a letter from the principal, which he ignored, a 16-page curriculum guide, tossed aside, and a map mesmer hmm, memorized. Each day, he took out the map alongside his schedule and traced a finger along the best routes. He didn't like the idea of going in without a plan. Eric liked to come in prepared. It must have been all those camping trips he used to take with the Boy Scouts, back when his father still tried to act like a normal dad. The meals, the clothes, everything planned down to the last detail. Now Eric had a real good idea where he was going. The first two periods, math and science, were decent enough. Eric thought it was good to get those tough subjects out of the way first thing in the morning, before he was really awake. Then he'd breeze through the easier classes in the middle of the day, like PE and art, not to mention lunch and home base, before ending his day with two of his favorites, social studies and English. Home base was where he was headed now at 9.52 in the morning. The hallways pulsed with life. Behind him, he heard a body slam into a locker, a muffled oomph, and the splatter of books falling to the floor. Body check, a voice announced. Hallenbach folded another voice. Watch where you're going, buddy. You're going to be late for class. Yep, 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 chirped another voice. Eric didn't turn around, didn't glance back. He kept right on walking, distancing himself from the sound of laughter and the voices of Griffin Connolly and that other one, the weasel. That's the end of chapter five, guys. Don't forget to answer your questions and we will chat with you later in the week. Have a good day.